Hi guys, Hallie Happoween here with another unboxing video. So we're gonna unbox one of these uh, um, Keyforge decks. So um, I also bought this one um, at the Keyforge Vault Tour in Ainto that I went to. And I don't know, but I just have this feeling that these Keyforge decks at uh, Vault Tours, in some way, they, they just have to be better, right? It's, it's not, it, it just gotta be. It's, it's true as long as you believe it, right? Let's open it up. All right, I'm really stuck there. All right, and let's see, what do we have? Ooh, interesting. So, what's the name? It's Frampton, Cloudster's Head. Hmm, I like that, Frampton. And it's Sanctum, Logos, and Mars. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Okay, let's open it up, let's open it up. Let's see, all right, get rid of the plastic, fine. Frampton, all right, we're gonna remove the identity card and we are going to have a look, first of all, at House Sanctum. Let's see, let's hope for a four horsemen. Uh, we start out with Protect the Weak. That's an upgrade and it gives you one Amber. This creature gets plus one Amber and Taunt. All right, that's nice, nice upgrade. We've got a second Protect the Weak. Okay, fine. So, a lot of Protecting the Weak. Um, a Gatekeeper, so that's five power one armor play if your opponent has seven or more amber capture all but five of it that's quite nice right so you could uh, you could put um, some of the excess amber uh, on this gatekeeper here but of course it's captured right so you don't steal it or anything it's just parked there for some time but if you can keep it alive with for example protect a week or whatever that could be nice all right, then we have a Sergeant Zekiel. That's a really nice creature. It allows you to ready and fight with a neighboring creature when you play it, right? But it has to be neighboring. Then we have a Sequis. So a four power, two armor creature. Reap, capture one amber. That's nice, that's a nice ability. We've got a Raiding Knight, another capture. Just a straight up capture one when you play it. And a Commander Ramil, so that's a tree power. And when you reap with it, you can use a friendly non-Sanctum creature. All right, all right, all right, that's nice. Ooh, Champion Tabris, I like that. That's the first time I have Champion Tabris uh, in one of my decks. So that's, that's, I'm excited about that, that's nice. All right, so that's a six power, two armor creature. And when it fights, it captures one. So I'm, I'm starting to see a trend here. We have a lot of ways to capture Amber, for example, um, apparently. We've got a Bulwark, so we can um, give some extra Amber, uh, some extra armor to Bulwark's neighbors. So that's fine. Ooh, a Potion of Invulnerability. It's an artifact and gives you one Amber. It's an Omni, so that's important, right? You can use it on any, uh, also with other houses. Sacrifice Potion of Invulnerability. For the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage. That is very nice. All right. Another artifact, a Hallowed Blaster. So we can use as an action, heal three damage from a creature. And then the final one is a Blinding Light. We get an Amber and we can choose a house to stun each creature of that house. All right. That looks quite nice, right? We've got quite some creatures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven creatures, right? We've got Bulwark to protect them with more armor. We've got the fight capture one. You can use a friendly non-sanctum creature, capture one, capture one when you reap, and you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature, right? So you could you could play Champion Tabris, put a Sergeant Zekiel next to it, and then use uh, its fight ability. And we've got quite some Protect the Weak upgrades and two nice artifacts, right? So you can capture some stuff and we can protect them, right? Using Al Blaster, Potion of Invulnerability. That's nice, I like it. Not really convinced, I was hoping for a Four Horsemen deck, but hey, we just keep opening new decks. All right, let's go to the next part. And the next part is Mars, all right. 
So we start off with an upgrade, Red Planet Ray Gun. Gives you an Amber and you give this creature a Reap. Choose a creature, deal one damage to that creature for each March creature in play. Very important distinction with a lot of other Mars cards. It doesn't say for each friendly ready Mars creature, right? It is for each Mars creature in play. So that means your Mars creatures and your opponent's Mars creatures. So this can get extremely out of hand. I like it. It's good. A jammer pack. Oh, I like jammer packs. So it gives you an amber and it says your opponent's keys cost plus two. Right, so that's that's quite nice. So maybe we have some good creatures to put it on, or maybe we can put it on one of those uh, Sanctum creatures that we saw before, right? So it could be nice. Ooh, Zork. So Zork is quite nice. It's a seven power creature, but it enters play stunned. Now before it fights, Zork will stun the creature it fights and each of that creature's neighbors, right? So that's just a stun machine. All right, then we have an Ulic Mega Mouth. Fight or reap, use a friendly non-Mars creature. That, that's nice, you can do some crazy combinations with these kinds of cards. I really like the Mega Mouth. And we've got two of them, that is wonderful. All right, two like, Mega Mouths. Then we've got a Quick Flix Plague Monster. When it fight or reaps, it deals three damage to each human creature. This damage cannot be prevented by armor, so that's, that's a really dangerous card for Sanctum creatures, so I'm actually, we have to check this out, right? So, in Sanctum, um, yeah, these are all human creatures, right? So that's a really dangerous card to put uh, together with Sanctum. So then the next creature we have is a John Smith. So John Smith is really nice because it's an elusive two power creature and fight or reap, you can ready a non-agent Mars creature. So that gives you one of those crazy combinations that uh, together with Ulic Mega Mod, you can do some crazy stuff. All right, we also have a Mother Gun. So a Mother Gun is an artifact and it says, reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. Deal damage to a creature equal to the number of Mars cards revealed this way, right? So that's a nice artifact. Then we also have Combat Pheromones, gives you an, an Amber, and it's an Omni, and it allows you to sacrifice Combat Pheromones to use up to two other Mars cards this turn. So use Mars cards, so that's nice. Then we also have a Soft Landing, that is very good. Um, a Phosphorus Stars, play, stun each non-Mars creature, but you gain two chains. So that's a very powerful effect. You stun a lot of creatures. So there is some compensation in gaining two chains. And then we have an EMP Blast that gives you an Amber. And each Mars creature and each robot creature is stunned. Each artifact is destroyed. So this, this can be very dangerous. You have to be careful if you have artifacts yourself. So each Mars creature and each robot creature is stunned which I find really weird because you're stunning your own Mars creatures, right? So I don't really understand this card, but fine, right? It gives you an Amber, or you can just discard it. Now, the nice thing here is that you can do some crazy stuff if you're, um, if you have a soft landing, right? The next creature or artifact you play this turn enters play ready. So you could do a soft landing, put in a John Smith, which will come in ready, and then you use something like, for example, look Mega Mouth, so you could, um, it's when you play it, it's exhausted. So this one comes into play ready because of soft landing. You can reap with it, gain an amber, then you can ready this one, you can reap with it. And this allows you to use a friendly non-Mars creature. So if you have some Sanctum or Logos creatures, you can do something with that. So you can do crazy combinations with Mars. And that's, that's what I like about them. All right. I'm not extremely convinced by this deck, but, uh, but, but th this part, but hey, let's see. Okay, now we have the final part, and that's Logos. So we've got a Novu Archaeologist. Action, archive a card from your discard pile. So that's quite nice. This is a creature, you can put it on the board, and then you can, instead of reaping with it, you can do an action and archive a card from your discard pile. There is a lot of potential in there, right? You could do some really powerful plays with that. Okay. Then we have a Quixo the Adventurer. So a three power skirmish creature, fight draw a card, that's just the run of the mill Logos creature, quite nice. A Doctor Escotero, I have said this uh, multiple times already on the, 
my gameplay videos and other unboxing videos, I really like Dr. Escritera. It's like um, a late game dust pixie, right? Because in the late game, when your opponent has one or two keys, for example, two keys, you gain one amber for each forged key your opponent has. So the longer the game takes, uh, the stronger Dr. Escritera becomes. All right, Dexter. Dexter is always nice. Play, capture one. But if it's destroyed, you can put it on top of your deck. So you know that your opponent will get it back every time. So Dexter is really annoying if you don't have any ways to purge it. And sometimes my solution is just leave it on the board because I'm, I'm going to lose that Amber anyway uh, a few turns ahead. We've got two Dexters. That's nice. All right. And then we have a Scrambler Storm. So what this says is it's, it gives you one Amber. Play, your opponent cannot play action cards on their next turn. That can really mess up someone's gameplay, right? For example, if you have enough Amber, you got a lot of Amber, your opponent has Shadows, he, doesn't, he hasn't played his bait and switch yet, just play a Scrambler Storm. <laughs> that can really mess up his plans. Random Access Archives. I don't know this card, I think. So it gives you an Amber and play, archive the top card of your deck. Hmm, that's nice. Okay, then we have a Positron Bolt. To so deal three damage to a flank creature, deal two damage to its neighbor, and deal one damage to the second creature's other neighbor. That's nice, right? This really makes you think about positioning, right? When you put your creatures on the board, you have to think about cards like, for example, Positron Bolt. All right, so we have another Positron Bolt, so that will give us some ways to deal with board state we've got a phase shift so we can play one non logos card this turn this um, this is always this can be really good this can be really powerful we have to check out i mean one non logos card what can it do i mean we could play one of these creatures an artifact or like like a, a blinding light right stun or maybe you could play a jammer pack upgrade on one of your logos creatures right increasing the number of keys in some way or maybe like a soft landing to <clears throat> ready up one of your your logos creatures right could be very nice right or maybe a phosphorus stars yeah could be interesting fish can be a devastating card all right so next up, we've got a Neurosiphon. So it gives you an Amber, and if your opponent has more Amber than you, you can steal one and draw a card. So that's a nice card. And then at the end, we've got Effervescent Principle. So play each player loses half their Amber, but, rounded down the, but rounding down the loss, and you gain one Chain. So that's quite a nice card. Okay, I'm curious about this deck. Um, I will probably post some gameplay videos with this deck and see how it works, right? So I'll get back to you guys with this deck. Thanks for listening and see you next time.